Good morning and welcome to Morning Trade uh, with Money Control. I'm Karunya Rao and I'm here to help you navigate today's trading session with actionable strategies, sectoral trends and most importantly your queries during the show. So please keep commenting on our live feed. We'll have your questions addressed by a technical analyst later on in the show. But before we do that, let's see what the handover looks like from global equity markets. Europe ended higher following a choppy session amid continuing market caution over inflationary outlook. Stock 600 was up 0.3% by the end of the day, having reversed earlier losses. Wall Street closes marginally higher as indices remain on track for a fifth straight week of gains. Stocks in the Asia-Pacific region open largely weak but recover off lows. The SGX Nifty, meanwhile, indicates a mildly lower start for the Indian markets. Stocks in the spotlight, Max Healthcare, Vipro and Metropolis Healthcare. We also explore the confluence of likely strong festive demand and falling commodity prices in the coming quarters. Could consumer-facing businesses have a good run? Okay, let's get going and discuss some of those stocks that are likely to be in the spotlight today with Gaurav Bissa of Incred. Gaurav, good morning and thank you for taking time out. Talk to us about the trade setup. Uh, what should investors and traders brace themselves for today? What are some important levels to watch? Good morning. Uh, the key level to watch out for in Nifty is going to be 18,000. Uh, not just because it's a psychological level, but if you look at the overall perspective, yes, the trend has been quite strong. Uh, the momentum has been good. Uh, the data has been positive. FI has been net uh, buyers uh, all throughout barring yesterday. Uh, but uh, 18,000 uh, call option has been commanding highest concentration for the last couple of weeks and we have seen yesterday also it attempted those levels but failed to sustain above those levels. So if Nifty sustains above 18,000 mark then I think today we can head towards 18,125. But uh, if we fail to do that then probably sideways to mild dip is what I expect for next couple of trading sessions. So I'm not looking at a major fall uh, as of now. There has to be a price action uh, move to suggest that. Uh, but uh, nevertheless 18,000 is going to be the key level to watch out for. Uh, there's a lot of comfortable lighting that happened at the 18,000 mark. Unless the call lighters are not forced to cover their positions, uh, I think it's going to be more of a delta play where uh, Nifty keeps viewing between 17,800, 17,950. Okay, all right, Gaurav. Let's talk about some stocks also, which could be in the limelight. First up, I want to highlight a Wipro. It has backed a multi-year contract from HM Treasury to deliver service integration and management uh, services to this particular company, HM Treasury. The services will include the likes of strategy, design, implementation to running business as usual services. So a whole host of uh, things uh, planned out as far as this particular deal win is concerned. But if we look at the technicals of Wipro, uh, yes, uh, yesterday we saw some uh, selling uh, coming by on, uh, on IT counters. But the last couple of months, they have seen a steady up move. Many of these uh, heavyweights have also risen. But talk to us about the, the way forward for this one. Do you think buying it at 430, 435 levels is a good idea or should one wait and if you foresee some more correction before a meaningful run up? Well, at this stage, it will be uh, more prudent to wait for a decline or at least uh, let us wait for the indicators to pull off. So if you look at the daily chart, uh, uh, the RSA has just reversed from 60 levels. So either the RSA should come again towards 40 where it, it can find support area and uh, or, or uh, the other thing can be it continues to trade above 60, 65 levels where we can see the price also picking up the momentum. Till that does not happen, I think it's going to be more of a sideways move. I'm not expecting a major fall, but yes, there can be some sideways move. We can revisit levels of uh, uh, 450 and 420. I think that that is where we can see some risk reward in the favor. So I will wait uh, to buy. I would not be in rush to buy the current levels. Okay, all right, fair enough. How about Max Healthcare? Now, this one, uh, of course, has been in the limelight last couple of sessions on the back of that bulk deal. Uh, now we learn that HDFC AMC has upped the stake in the company by 0.4%. So, with this particular buying of uh, four tenths of a percent stake, its shareholding in Max Healthcare stands at 5.18% compared to 4.78% before. Uh, could it react positively today and not just today, but Max Healthcare uh, for a slightly short to medium term time horizon? How does it look? 
See, it is going to be difficult to gauge uh, the quantum of upside or the quantum of move that one can anticipate uh, because of uh, the, the uh, up in the stake. Uh, nevertheless, uh, what I generally feel is events don't lead or news don't lead to directions for a long period of time. They don't lead to trend formation. Uh, if you look at the daily chart, then uh, since January 2021, uh, if you connect the tops, it is uh, trading near the a uh, fall in trend and resistance area, which is right now uh, placed at 405 levels. So once it uh, gives a close above 405, then I think uh, irrespective of what the fundamental news comes, so we can see a very strong upside sort of coming in. Uh, the setup is extremely strong, but uh, rather than preempting, I would not mind giving uh, 15, 20 points more uh, and then buy at high levels because the confirmation will be coming at high levels. So I would not mind waiting for time being. It is something that should go on the radar, but buy only above 405. Okay, makes sense. Um, let let me stick to the healthcare and pharma space. Uh, Metropolis Healthcare, again, another company, uh, some news flow coming in there. Uh, what we learn is that the CEO Vijender Singh has resigned and the company agreed to release him from the duties and the position of CEO with effect from 17th August. Now, this was informed to the exchanges late last evening. How could the stock react today? And Again, I, I want to understand how the technicals are likely to play out from these levels because if we look at the last two month gains, um, it has been largely flattish. Well, yes, uh, it, it witnessed some amount of uh, upside because the indicators like uh, many other stocks, they were in the deeply oversold zone and we saw a technical bounce sort of coming. Uh, 1400 is going to be a key level to watch out for, uh, but to 1390 to be precise. If it trades below those levels, then I think uh, the pressure can mount. Overall structure is still uh, lower tops, lower bottoms. The trend is weak. Uh, there is a bearish crossover in Ichimoku as well. So in my opinion, uh, till the stock is not trading above 1515, uh, it, it's going to be sell on rise candidate for me. And if it opens flat, then I think it can still garner uh, a, a short or it can still visit levels of 1390. So in my opinion, it's a weak stock. Uh, better to exit if somebody is long in the name. Buy only above 1515. Okay, got to request you to stay on with us. We'll call out some queries for you. Lots of uh, comments and questions coming your way. But before we do that, I want to bring on board my colleague uh, Manisha Gupta, who tracks the commodity space very, very closely. And today we'll be talking about uh, decline in soft commodity prices. Morning, Manisha. Talk to us about what's happening here. Because from what we understand, uh, the festive demand is likely to be strong this time around. And just ahead of that, we're witnessing some of these uh, commodities like edible oil, sugar, etc. The price is falling a tad. Well, they are, yes, uh, in the markets today as well. And when you look at this week as well, Karunia, we are looking at a decline in many of these soft agriculture commodities. I mean, as you mentioned, the edible oil space itself has seen a decline. So from the highs of 2022, we are now down by nearly 30 to 35 percent on the lower side. The Indian markets, we also have seen the government uh, be, be proactive here. They have told the Indian companies to continue to cut prices. So from the highs as well, we are down by nearly 30 to 35 rupees when it comes to the Indian edible oil prices per litre as well. In this week as well, when you look at the soybean prices, we are down by nearly 3%. Palm oil this week is down by 9% as well. Edible oil uh, as a sector, the availability into the into Indian markets is huge. And the major producers like Argentina, Brazil, Malaysia, Indonesia also are looking at a higher crop and an export surplus this time around. So this is one sector which you would believe that the highs have been done for this year. And from these current levels, it's going to be consolidation, even for the decline for the rest of this year. You know, even uh, commodities like wheat, sugar, down, uh, you know, uh, in um, mid to high single digits. Uh, is, it a good, uh, is it a good development for consumer-facing companies? Will they uh, see some meaningful impact on their performance given the, the cooling off in these, uh, you know, uh, raw material prices? It sure does, you know. So from, for, from the SMCG company's point of view, it is going to be lower prices that they are looking at, lower raw material prices, and the demand inching up as we are into the festivities right now. For wheat as well, we have seen prices continue to decline, especially with the Ukraine shipments now hitting the international market. The last one week has seen wheat prices decline by 8% as well. When you look at the advanced estimates numbers that the government did release in this week itself, you are looking at near record crop across both there. So yes, wheat also continues to see a decline after that a very high prices that we saw in the months of May and June there. Sugar is yet another one down by nearly 4% in this week itself. We are looking at higher production in the Indian market. 
The next season also is expected to be good. When you look at the Indian sugar sowing, it's up by nearly 8%. So we are looking at a good cane crop this time around. And then Brazil being the biggest sugar producer and consumer, there as well with the crude prices coming off, ethanol prices declining, gasoline prices slightly under control. There are uh, uh, Brazil uh, mills also switching to sugar rather than biofuels. So we are looking at higher sugar production from Brazil as well, which seems to be weighing onto the market. Yeah, let's see how, uh, you know, FMCG companies react who use all of these commodities heavily uh, in their production. But, you know, I know we told our viewers that we'll focus on soft commodities, but cannot uh, not talk about precious metals when talking about festive season. Yesterday, uh, I know there was some, uh, you know, cool off scene in uh, precious metals as well, both gold and silver. Has there been any development or change overnight or is the trend looking uh, largely the same? Term, yes, you could uh, look at some more profit taking and it's a good investment buying as we've been telling, telling you for a longer term. In the near term, it is still a bit of a decline on the charts that we've seen overnight as well. The US dollar index is back over 107. That seems to weighing on many of the commodities right now. So apart from soft commodities which are declining because of the strength in US dollar, that is exactly how you are looking at the other non-agro commodities also faring. So whether it is crude, precious metals, base metals, Everything in Asia has started slightly on a tepid mode because of the strength in U.S. dollar. That really seems to be ruling the sentiment right now. All right. Great. Thanks much, uh, Manisha, then for joining in with a heads up on what's happening, uh, not only in soft commodities like palm oil, wheat, sugar, etc., but also in the precious metal space. Uh, Okay, moving on, uh, we'll bring back uh, Gaurav Bissa once again to talk technicals. A lot of queries lined up for him. Gaurav, uh, the first one I'd like to uh, like you to address is Apex Frozen Foods. David has written to us and asking you if it's the right time to buy this stock. Uh, yesterday, we, we had done a report on uh, MC Pro as well, wherein it was betting on uh, Apex, but on declines and, you know, using uh, some cooling off coming, uh, you know, on the counter as a buying opportunity. It has run up quite a bit uh, since our last recommendation as top Diwali pick, 30% up from those levels. But is that run rate going to continue in the next few months? What is the, what is the chart telling you? Well, again, if you look at a daily chart, uh... It's interesting to see that 360 is the level from where uh, the last time we saw a major fall coming and this time uh, the the breaks were hit uh, exactly at the 660 zone. So unless uh, it does not give a close about 360, I would not be too gung-ho about getting into the name. Uh, it's uh, RSC is also cooling off. There's a bearish MSCD crossover as well. So there can be some amount of profit booking that cannot be ruled out. Uh, I'm not saying it's looking extremely weak, but uh, it does not garner a fresh buy at the current uh, juncture. Okay. The next question is from Vijay Kumar. He wants your view on Dixon Technology. A uh, good momentum seen on this counter last three months. Yes, it has uh, had its bad days, but largely a good up move, you know, from uh, 3,500 levels to now firmly above that 4,000 mark. What lies ahead, Gaurav? Uh, Dixon, I like. It. In fact, it's one of my recommendations for today. And uh, it's giving a a breakout triangle pattern breakout and it's coming out of the Ichimoku cloud as well. Yeah, volume participation is also uh, increasing. Uh, it can head towards 4,300. One can keep a stop of 3,900. Okay. The next question is from uh, Nishit Kapoor. He wants uh, your uh, recommendation or suggestion on IEX and Wipro. Of course, uh, both of them have had some uh, news triggers as well. So how could these two counters react? You've already mentioned Wipro. So let's focus on IEX. Uh, the immediate support for IEX is going to be uh, you know, 155. Uh, where we have seen the stock uh, bouncing very strongly, uh, the last uh, two swings have been from these levels as well. So let it sustain uh, above 155. I think uh, we can see some stability sort of coming as well. So I'm not very bearish at this now, but 155 is where I will start reviewing the stock for long side. Okay. What about ITC? Um, we have the next question uh, wherein we'd like to know on ITC and Yes Bank. ITC, of course, is at a 52-week high level, just nearing that uh, 316 mark. Uh, meanwhile, Yes Bank as well, if you could share a medium and long-term view. So for ITC, uh, it's more of a trading bet uh, because 
on daily charts the risk reward is not going to be that favorable this, the stop losses will be quite deep uh, the breakout level is around 285 it's trading at 315 so there has to be a base formation before it uh, starts for a major upside but uh, somebody who wants to buy here can keep a stop loss of 303 and keep riding the trend uh, it's at a multi year high so difficult to say where exactly it will stop uh, in such cases it's always better to ride the trend so 303 is going to be the stop loss for now and as it goes up uh, we can one can keep trailing stop losses so that is the way uh, one can play for IDC. And uh, Yes Bank as well, the same viewer uh, wanted to address, wanted you to address Yes Bank also. Uh, yes Bank, uh, uh, it's not something that should be bought for uh, medium term. Uh, maybe for uh, a one year, I think uh, that is the way to look at it. It's been trading in a range, if you look at the charts, on uh, uh, weekly or daily charts, since 2020, we have seen the stock trading in a range of uh, uh, 10, 11 on the lower end, uh, probably 18 on the higher end. One can buy uh, at the current juncture, keep a stop loss of uh, probably uh, you know 13 and play for 21 kind of levels. Uh, see, with the stocks like IID or Yes Bank, uh, one should not be looking at how much percent I'm making because it's a very small ticker item. So one can say I'm buying at 16 and keeping a stop loss of 13 so i'm keeping a 20 percent stop loss that is not the way you should be looking at it uh, yes roi is important but it depends on at times it has to be absolute at times it has been in terms of percentage here uh, the stop losses has to be around 13 and on the upside that uh, 21 is what one can expect all right okay moving on to the next question and this is uh, from jagdish he wants your view on tata motors in fact uh, several other viewers have also been writing to us i see gulam hussain's name and a few others i think they've just uh, uh, scrolled up but lot let's talk about tata motors most people we've interacted with in the recent past are very upbeat from a fundamental standpoint and a technical standpoint so do you agree with them uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we were also positive, but we played uh, by, by recommending to our clients Tata Motors DVR. The structure for there was uh, much better, uh, rising channel, higher tops, higher bottoms. So I'm not saying Tata Motors is uh, weak as such, but uh, it gave a breakout. The breakout levels were around 460 and uh, it went towards the level of 500. So, uh, some part of that target has already been met. I would be a buyer at declines towards 460, 465 here. Uh, I don't think uh, the risk reward is too much in favor. Uh, the structure is still better for Data Motors DVR because, as I said, it's trading a rising channel. So if one wants to take a, uh, a risk uh, and, and buy, then I think keeping the stop loss at 233, one can buy Data Motors DVR. Right. Okay, all right. Um, how about uh, sale? It scrawled back once again to its May levels. A good recovery seen from the lows that it hit back in June. Um, Mohit, one of our viewers, has written to us. And if you could shed some light on how the chart is looking. Uh, we were also positive on sale at lower levels, but uh, as of now, we have just advised our clients to book positions, trading positions. So if somebody is looking for trading, I would wait for a decline to add. Uh, beyond that, I, I think uh, it's, it's already in the deeply overbought zone. Prices have run up too much. I'll wait for a consolidation and then fresh breakouts or I will add on declines. Okay. Blue Star has, uh, you know, seen a phenomenal run up last one week, especially it's added about 60, 70 bucks on the counter. How is the chart looking from these levels? Uh, several of viewers have commented on Blue Star. One of them, I have his name, Sagar Nerella. But just for the benefit of our larger audience, how's it? How's the chart looking? And uh, what should one do um, at the current levels? Uh, the chart is good. If you look at the daily chart, then there's a breakout that was seen at levels of 1050, 1055. We had a positive session yesterday. The candle is also good. If it, if you're witnessing follow-up buying today, then I think uh, one can buy, keep a stop loss of uh, 1030. And uh, this particular move can uh, lead it towards level of 1150 to 1170. Okay, all right. How's Sipla looking? I mean, we've covered hospital stocks, we've covered diagnostics, so why not a pharma company as well? Michael has written to us and he's asking if it's a good time to buy Sipla. Now, this counter also, uh, while yes, the entire pharma pack has been sluggish, but it has seen some momentum in the last, uh, you know, 30, 40 days. Is that going to continue? 
Well, there are two ways to look at it. When pharma was languishing, Cipla was the one which did not fall too much. Uh, it was stuck in the range. And now that pharma is witnessing some upside, indices are also gearing strong. It is still in the uh, range. So it's more of a range bound move. Uh, somebody who wants to buy for short term. I think uh, one should avoid. Uh, probably if somebody wants to keep for one year or something like that, then yes, uh, one can buy. Uh, the stock losses will be deep at levels of uh, 925, 930. But uh, the kind of consolidation that we have seen on weekly charts, uh, once it goes beyond uh, 1000, 8000, I think there's going to be a very strong upside that one can expect. It can be one of the uh, best performing pharma names. But for that to happen, you need to have patience. And that is why I said if somebody who has a view of minimum one year can buy, but for trading perspective, I'll wait. Okay. Um, let's pull out uh, ONGC and uh, IOC as well. Um, Kirutik Kumar has uh, posted a comment and if you could share your view on these stocks, uh, both from the oil and gas space, of course, uh, one is an OMC and one is a, you know, uh, one operates in the oil and in the gas space. Talk to us about how things are looking for both of these uh, counters and if there is a third name from the energy pack that you want to flag off instead. Uh. Second question is easy. Uh, if I want to have something from uh, energy space, I will rather stick to the name which has been uh, going quite strong, which is going to be Reliance. Where we have seen this trend has been quite strong. We have recommended the uh, uh, option based strategy as well. Uh, one can keep a stop of 2600 by Reliance. Uh, this particular move can take it towards uh, 27, 25 levels. Uh, so, on that perspective, uh, Reliance looks good. Coming back to your first question about ONGC and uh, uh, IOC, then I think uh, both of these counters are looking a little bit uh, uh, perplexed. Uh, we are not seeing strong momentum as such. Uh, I would skip both at these levels because uh, when it comes to ONGC, we had a technical bounce. Uh, uh, there was a very strong fall after that uh, because of uh, uh, indicators being the worst. Well, we saw a bounce, technical bounce coming in. But at this stage, I don't see uh, this what too much in favor. Same goes for IOC. Okay. Um, I know we don't have too much of uh, historical data for NICA, but if you could give us some forecast or some projections. Uh, several viewers have been writing to us on NICA. One of them is Mehboob Subani. I saw somebody called Sai also posting a comment. Um, it saw a significant fall in the month of April, May. And since then, it saw some recovery, but largely uh, has been trading in a range since uh, mid-May, I would say. What is it that one can expect going forward from these levels? Uh, they do look attractive, but should one buy or do you foresee some consolidation? It still is below that 1400 mark. See, if you look at the daily chart, then uh, it's it's basically consolidating. There's a price contraction that is happening. You can call this as a volatility contraction happening. Uh, the right way to uh, play this is uh, if it's not in the FNO, otherwise uh, the structure says if it gives a breakdown, then you short. If it gives a breakout, then you buy. So for me, it's a buy only if it goes above levels of 1465, 1470. Uh, till then, I would uh, avoid uh, entering into the name. Okay. Um we're running out of time. A lot of queries are trickling in. But Gaurav, I know Dixon is one stock uh, that you wanted to recommend to our viewers. What's the other one? What what what's the stock that they should also keep uh, keep on their radar? Uh, the second stock is RHIM, RHI Magnesita. Uh, the structure is uh, extremely strong. And if you look at uh, the kind of move that we've seen, uh, it, it's crossed the previous swing high uh, with uh, aggressive volumes on uh, four hourly charts. We've seen a breakout as well coming above the cloud area. I think uh, we can see a very strong upside. Uh, fine identify is what I will be playing for. Keep a small surplus of 545. I think uh, RHIM can do uh, quite good in the next two days. Okay, well, thank you so much, Gaurav, for sharing your views, uh, your recommendations and your insights on the markets, its technicals and a host of stocks. Thank you so much for joining in. Pleasure having you on board. With that, we're going to wrap up uh, the show. Thank you so much for tuning in. But keep it with Money Control Markets with Santo and CJ comes up next.